Hey Finksters and welcome to today's Coffee Break Python. So in today's video you're going to learn about the Python built-in eval function and um, it takes one argument like per default it, it has two additional optional arguments which we will discuss in a moment but it like per default it takes one argument a string and then it takes this string this is a piece of Python code it's a Python expression actually parses it and runs runs the expression okay for example you have um, here if you have in a shell we set x to 1 we uh, pass a string value which we will see indicated with this single quote uh, enclosed in the single quotes x plus 1 so it takes the variable x here uh, puts it in and adds adds 1 to the variable and it evaluates the result of this expression of this piece of python code at runtime and gives you the result so let's have an example how it how it works in in, in a python shell so for example you can it's a built-in function so you don't have to import anything then you just add some code for example you can do 2 plus 2 so the code must return something and this is like the first requirement of the of the eval function it must return a value and um, yeah 2 plus 2 returns a value but you can also do like you can use list comprehension say x for x in range 10 now this will create a list of 10 values and remember you pass you, you don't pass a list comprehension into it you pass a string um, describing a list comprehension in, into it so it so it can at runtime evaluate code that you actually you could also generate some code uh, programmatically in your in your program you can write code so like your code can produce code and this code can then be executed by the eval function and there's no other way of running this code right or basically there's one alternative which is the exec function which is also built in python function i have done another video on the exec function i will also give a link in the description below um yeah but i mean those two functions you have to use them either the eval function or the exec function and um and that's why it's called dynamic execution because you can dynamically create code and put it into the eval function and execute or run the, run the code so um so in short maybe i will read the tldr <laughs> too long i didn't read a uh, paragraph which i wrote here in, in the blog article this is like the condensed what is the eval function it pa passes a string argument s into a python expression runs it and returns the result of the expression and this poses a security risk because a user can now use it to run code on your computer. So another application of this is to um, let the user actually give you some code that, that will be run on your server environment. So for example, say you have a high performance computing cluster in, in your organization, you want users to run some Python code on the cluster. Um, so you give them a, like the <laughs> per default that your, your, your primary idea is to give them the eval function. So you do the following. Uh, so you have a code, you give them ac access to your code, for example, here. So you, you say, say you create this, this piece of software, you have user code, variable user code, and this is like an input function, for example, your user, your code to be executed. Actually, let's call it expression. Your expression code to be executed. So this, we will ask the user to give us some code to to put in some code as an input, and then we will run the code on our server. So we will basically this, this application runs on your server, and the user maybe logs in into your server per SSH, and then he just uh, he runs your Python program. You allow him to run the Python program, and then it, it executes uh, the code. So it calls eval user code. And maybe we print the result to the standard output so that the user can see it, okay? So this is your idea. You have these two, two lines of code, you run them on your server, you allow the user to put in your, uh, his own code. So what is the security risk here? Uh, so now you, the user can put in some code like um, print hello world. Actually, it didn't even have to print something because we already printed. So we don't, it, it that just has to return a value. So we can have maybe a string concatenation, hello plus world, like this. And then it executes hello world and gives us the response. So this would be a ping mechanism. But now the user can also have, um, like if you, it can also use the following code snippet, for example. If it, if it runs the same code, the user, then we can put in this one, yeah, OS system rm minus r asterisk. So this basically means that it will 
the user will actually just remove all the all the files and folders in your home directory and so the user it is it can be very dangerous to give your user access to this code snippet yeah so um, another another thing your user could do is to um, create a function like in the dev a function and this function does some nasty things here yeah nasty things and then it prints you are hacked so something like this yeah so you so it defines a function f and then you give the user access to this function so let's see whether the user can can ru actually run the function so if you run this code snippet, you get your expression to be executed let's, let's see whether the user can can run the function here yes so now this function can be can do anything yeah so it can even like import stuff it can uh, change your whole computer it can create some files it can run some background processes tro trojan horses and everything okay so you can do anything in this in this function and the user could then access the function and you should also be aware that the user can actually see so if the, if you give the user access to this one so maybe let's make it a bit more structured and run again so say the user can now um, put in some code now the user can call dir for directory and this gives him access to all the functions that have been defined and all the function he has access to and now this for example means that he can use all built-in functions uh, he can use uh, user code this is a variable here um, it should also have access to the function f so now the user can actually see which functions can he execute okay so now if we change for example in our environment we say we put in import os so the os or operating module provides us many means of manipulating the um, operating system now say the user calls dir it gives it gives him the uh, current directory and now he, now the user sees that the os module is actually available and now it can in a subsequent execution it can use the functionality from the os uh, module so the user they can use it so basically it's 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 a it's a bit a security risk um, you should be aware of this in many cases it's also not but i mean if you if you have an uh, interactive application where you want the user to input some commands and then you run the commands then this could be dangerous and you should be aware of this so always always keep this in mind otherwise the eval function is a great function and um, yeah return value is the is the expression to be uh, evaluated so we have some examples here for example eval 2 plus 2 is 4 here we have a list concatenation operation it then just performs the list con concatenation operation and um, you can also execute functions now there are two optional arguments. Uh, this is the globals argument and the locals argument. And these are just the namespaces. So these are dictionaries that define the variables that are globally accessible by the executed object. So for example, if you have, um, so I have an example here, this one, if you don't want to allow the user to access certain, certain uh, functions, then you can also do the following because you see the user has now used the dir function which is also built in uh, um, to to see which functions are available and which variable names are defined and you see built ins this, this underscore underscore built ins is available so all the built in functions are actually in the namespace and are actually accessible by the by the user um, and what you can do is actually to restrict the access to the user this will increase the security of your application or will improve the security so for example um, if you run this code again maybe let's refresh the shell to have clean slate again so let's run this code okay and now if, if you call dir you see you, the user now have access, has access to all these functionalities okay so it can for example run the function f uh, and it can, can run all built-in functions especially the dir function for example the directory function which we have just run um, but now if you can if you if you use the uh, variant of this so here instead of ever user code you give you give it some restrictions yeah so you so you give it one dictionary you define actually the namespace you override the default namespace uh, and you give the dictionary which maps the built-ins name to none instead of the real built-ins package now you can override you can specifically grant the user access to certain functions or names in your namespace so if you run this and now we try to uh, run dir to see which names are available we cannot even do it yeah so it's not 
uh, it's not available so it will just throw an error so the user now doesn't have control um, or doesn't have control about uh, like your namespace doesn't see the variables that are defined and the functions that are defined and he can access so now its uh, safety has improved <laughs> a lot yeah so this way you can like modify uh, what the user actually sees when execute when running the eval function um, uh, in combination with this input um, and um, yeah so you can define your own namespaces sometimes it's also like it makes sense for example you can have you can define a variable x say 42 and now you can we can run um, if you run this now we haven't defined variable x anywhere yeah so now the user has even access to the to the dir so to the uh, um, to, it even has access to os but the variable x is not defined anywhere but we inject that variable s into the uh, uh, into the global namespace so now the user can do like this x plus x now this expression to be executed and you see 42 plus 42 is 84 so it can actually use the variable that you that you inject into the namespace so this is also quite useful if you use the um, eval function okay so i think uh, that's enough for today if you want to um, improve your python skills and definitely check out our uh, book python one-liners it's uh, like uh, 2020 best-selling books of the finkster books also check out uh, our uh, freelancer course i give links to both uh, in the description below if you want to improve your skills and create this practical skill set um, of a freelance developer um, that is like a very rounded set skills of the of a practitioner and will, will like improve your python skills by leaps and bounds while um, also paying you some money in the learning process so you learn python getting paid in the process and developing this very rounded set of skills uh, in contrast to the like more theoretical skills that you won't use in practice um, very frequently okay so thanks for listening to this video uh, please um, subscribe and uh, like the video comment if you have any questions see you in the next video bye <laughs>